I do want to say a quick thing about nuclear energy where I, you know, this is something that I read this so precisely feels like aerospace before SpaceX, where mm. from everything that I know about all of these, I am the physics of this stuff hasn't changed. And the reasons why things are expensive now are not fundamental. I somebody should be going into I uh, really hard Elon Musk style at uh, fission, economical fission, not fusion, where the fusion is the the kind of the the darling of people that want to go and do nuclear because it doesn't have the taint that fission has in a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. But it's an almost absurdly complex thing where nuclear fusion is you look at the, the tokamaks or any of the things that people are building and it's doing all of this infrastructure just at the end of the day to make something hot so that you can then turn into energy through a conventional power plant. And all of that work, which we think we've got line of sight on, but even if it comes out, then you have to do all of that immensely complex, expensive stuff just to make something hot, where nuclear fission is basically you put these two rocks together and they get hot all by themselves. That is just that much simpler. It's just orders of magnitude simpler. And the actual rocks, the refined uranium, is not very expensive. It's a couple percent of the, the cost of electricity. That's why I made that point where you could have something which was five times less efficient than current systems. And if the rest of the plant was a whole bunch cheaper, you could still be super, super valuable. So how much of the pie do you think uh, could be solved by nuclear energy by fission? So how, how much could it become the primary source of energy on Earth? It could be most of it. Like the reserves of uranium as it stands now could not power the whole Earth. But I am, you know, you get into breeder reactors and thorium and things like that that you do for conventional fission. Uh, there is enough for, for everything. Now, I mean, solar photovoltaic has been amazing. You know, it's I I one of my current projects is working on an off-grid system and it's been fun just kind of again putting my hands on all the stripping the wires and wiring things together and doing all of that and just having followed that a little bit from the outside over the last couple decades there's been semiconductor like magical progress uh in what's going on there. So, I'm all for all of that, but it doesn't solve everything and nuclear really still does seem like the smart money bet for what you should be getting for baseband on a lot of things. And solar may be cheaper for, uh, you know, peaking over air conditioning loads during the, the summer and things that you can push around in different ways. But it's one of those things that's, it's just strange how we've had the technology sitting there, but these non-technical reasons on the social optics of it has been this major forcing function for something that you know, really should be at the, the cornerstone of all of the world's concerns with energy. It's interesting how the non-technical factors have really dominated something that is so fundamental to kind of the existence of the human race as we know it today.